Water is soothing and relaxing and adds a whole different dimension to your landscape. Exactly. So let's start with uh, the water feature itself. Okay. What, what are some things that we need to do to make sure that our water feature stays in tip top shape? Gotcha. So one big thing that we run into is leaks. Yeah. So there's a couple of things we need to do. How do we know that we have a leak? You know, what's obviously if you're losing water, it's like something's going on. So we want to start with a leak protocol. So okay. what a leak protocol is, we want to isolate because most, as you can see here, most water features have a stream and a waterfall. Right. And then you have your pond area. Well, which area is leaking? You can be on a wild goose chase and it can drive you mad trying to pinpoint what that is. So to kind of find the needle in the haystack, if you will, is the best to go ahead and turn your pump off, fill your water level all the way up to your normal operating level, and let's leave it off for 24 hours. If you need to leave it off longer, throw an aerator in there because the fish, they need the oxygen. Mm -hmm. So let's see if the pond itself recedes within that 24 hours. If it doesn't, now we've isolated most likely to the waterfall area. And what we found, it's probably about 95% of the time, it's in the waterfalls. And is that because it's doing all the work? Sure. And if you look at the, like the stream, the shallow stream bed, right. it's very easy sometimes to just have a, a low edge or a dam, it's not uncommon. So if you're not staying on top of your pond, when we talk about how do we stay on top of this to keep it in tip top shape, you know, it's, we're almost fall. So when the leaves begin their fall, if they dam up in the stream, it can easily push water out over the edge. So sometimes you don't see that. So when you talk about the edge of your pond, let's go sure. look at yeah, that so absolutely. that you can show us exactly what you're talking about. Absolutely. So when we're looking at the stream itself, so let's say we've isolated it and we know that the pond itself is holding water. So we're going to come up here. This is about six foot long. So when we build these water features, we literally take our liner and we roll it up along the, the, the back edge. So you I don't see even see that. that. Yep. Yeah, so you, you covered just it up nicely. Exactly. But you've just folded that back yep. under and rolled it up. Yep, we literally just fold it up nice and neat, about a little six inch, because sometimes you have to get in there and it's what we call pull up the pants. So <laughs> yeah. if that's settled, you want a little extra overlap so you can get in there and pull it up. So here's what can happen. Let's just say I'm in here and I'm actually doing some gardening, I'm going to pull some weeds or something like that, and I walk over and I step on this edge, and unbeknownst to me, I pushed it down, now that water is going to push its way out and it can literally drain this thing. It can take it. Now on these, we have a mechanical skimmer and we can talk about that. You're only going to lose about four inches of water. So that's usually what happens. It's a low edge. Sometimes in the biofall back here, some people will have, so we put biofall, so biofiltration on this, but other water features may just have a, a two inch or inch and a half PVC pipe. It's what we call the fire hydrant right, effect. Right. That can be up there and sometimes that can get dislodged a piece of wood or a rock gets shifted. Sometimes just animals come up, squirrels, and they can dislodge something and push water out of the back of it. So that's basically, we would just inspect around the perimeter of the pond, typically find a low edge, and you just pull the pants up. So if you pull this all back mm -hmm. and you don't see a low edge, right. then what's your next step as far as finding your leak? You wanna make sure that you don't have any heavy debris in your pond, or in your stream rather. So make sure there's right. not any leaf dams. I mean, because even- And just visually look yeah, for absolutely. that. Absolutely, just look through, because most people are so used to staring at their beautiful water features, you'll notice something out of place. Yeah. So that's usually uh, leaves, debris, like you can see some leaves, and even some algae too. If you get like an excessive string algae or blanket algae buildup, that can actually push water out. One other thing, I just thought about this. At my house, I've had a leak on my pond in my backyard. Water lettuce, beautiful water lettuce. So you put those in the biofalls. Uh-huh. If you know water lettuce or water hyacinth, yes. they grow prolifically. Well, they grew so much that the water could not escape the biofall fast enough and the water went out the back. And I'm a pond professional. And I'm like, <laughs> what? maybe I'm overthinking. It's like, what happened to my pond? Uh, and sure uh, enough, I look up there and there's water lettuce going like crazy. So I pull a few out, I throw them down in the pond and they're totally fine. Water escapes and goes down. So even a pond professional can overlook stuff like that. So basically you just look for dams and low edges. But there's one other thing that we don't ever want to happen. What's that? Chipmunks. Oh, what do they do? They'll burrow in the sides and like any other rodent, their teeth are always growing. So they're constantly chewing to whittle those down and they'll chew in the sides of your liner. And how do you know that's a problem? It's when, you, when you're in leak protocol, you're searching, you have no low edges, you have no dams, you know that the pond's holding water. And a lot of times it's usually a visual. So what do I... people do a lot of times? They put bird feeders beside their pond. Yeah, but that's so much fun to and have it all right there. Chipmunks love it. Oh, see, <laughs> so, yeah. So, but that's, I mean, that's probably 1% of the time. Um, we do have some, some, some scenarios where rats, I mean, that has happened, where they can get in there. So what you really want to do when you're building these, if you're doing a DIY project, don't leave a bunch of gaps in between your rocks. 
backfill that really, really well with soil, pack it in nice. Because chipmunks, they don't, they're looking for the path of the least resistance. Yeah. They want a little burrow, or like get in a little, little spot. So if it's all packed in there with soil, they're probably just gonna pass on by. Got but it. you think a lot of water, a lot of water features, it's just a lot of rock stacked on one another. So it's great crevices for those little guys, for Alvin to go in there and just do his thing, so. Okay, so Derek, you turned a leak into an asset in this particular pond. Show us that. Yes, so it's what we call our secret falls. So we had a low edge over on this side and you can kind of tell we've got our gravel over here and I can actually pull this rock back just to show. So this liner, as we were talking about that low edge where it gets pushed down, this liner right, right across through here was actually pushed down and water was coming out. So what I did is literally came through and just pulled all this back, made sure the water stayed on the inside of it, take a couple of rocks, just kind of disguise it. And then you got a nice little secret falls. In Sweet. There. So even a problem can become an enhanced part of your pond if you know what you're doing. See that's, and as enthusiasts and, and people that hang out with their water features, you're constantly playing with them and tinkering with them because this is a living organism. It's not, landscapes are beautiful, but there's something about this, this movement stuff. You, you find yourself wanting to play and yeah. actually become a kid again. Yeah. Derek, this is exactly the t kind of thing that I think that most people want in their gardens, but are sometimes a little bit intimidated by it. So we really appreciate your expertise Absolutely. on this to help our, our viewers. We want, we want water. It helps with the wildlife, it helps with all kinds of things, and it helps you relax. Absolutely. Water's life. Yeah. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.